Moses is now standing on the plains of Moab. He's not going to enter the promised land himself, but the people he speaks to will, and very soon. Now, his message is recorded for us here in Deuteronomy chapters 29 and 30. And here Moses reminds Israel of their failures. He's going to warn them of the consequences of sin. And he's also going to encourage them to follow the Lord. Imagine how much wisdom Moses has accumulated over the last 40 years. Think of the the passion behind that wisdom, all that experience, all that has been created in Moses' heart. Now, I want you to imagine Moses here as he delivers that passion in a final message to a brand new generation of Israelites who happen to be, by the way, stubborn to the bone. And he's going to make three appeals to them, the same three appeals you and I need to hear today. First, Moses makes this appeal, and here it is. Don't close your eyes to the dangers of sin. And that's a summary. Now, Israel's track record, of course, is a testimony that they, they haven't learned this lesson of sin's danger. Beginning in verse 2 of chapter 29, Moses reminds them of how gracious God has been to them, these miracles of grace over the past 40 years. He says this, You have seen all that the Lord did before your eyes, the signs and those great wonders. Your clothes have not worn out on you, and your sandals have not worn off your feet. Can you imagine wearing a shirt and a pair of shoes that last 40 years? Well, the trouble is, Israel doesn't connect the dots. Their sinful hearts close their eyes to the greatness of God. Moses says here in verse 4 that they don't have a heart to understand or eyes to see or ears to hear. Now, only God can make them see and hear what he's been doing. By the way, remember those expressions, eyes to see and ears to hear. You're going to hear similar words uh, that are going to show up in warnings from Isaiah the prophet, uh, from Jesus Christ, among others. The world lives in sunshine and beauty all around, but but refuses to hear the voice of God and, and see his handiwork in creation. God has to open their blinded eyes. Now, here in verses 18 and 19, Moses warns Israel about false worship. Beware lest there be among you a man or woman or clan or tribe whose heart is turning away from the Lord our God to go and serve the gods of those nations. Beware, lest there be among you one who blesses himself in his heart, saying, I shall be safe, though I walk in the stubbornness of my heart. Oh, Moses understands the deceptive nature of sin, doesn't he? He understands that somebody can defiantly disobey God and all the while walk around saying to himself, well, I'm, I'm safe. My friend, there is no such thing as safe sin. Don't be blind to the dangers of sin. That's this first appeal. Sin wants to overthrow your life and bring you to ruin, as Moses affirms here in verse 21. Now Moses moves on to make a passionate appeal again. Here's the second one. Don't ever forget that God's grace is greater than sin. You know, you can ruin your life with sin, but you can just as easily ruin your life by believing God won't forgive your sin. You can be brought to ruin because you think you've sinned too much or too long. No, Moses begins here now in chapter 30 by delivering some rather wonderful news. It's true, the nation will sin against God. But listen to what Moses says here in verse 2. Return to the Lord your God. And obey his voice with all your heart and with all your soul. Then the Lord your God will have compassion on you. Yes, sin is destructive, but God's grace is constructive. Sin will tear away. God gives back. Sin is strong, but God's grace is stronger. And that's not only true for Israel. That's also true for you and me today. 
I remember reading the true story that began in a poor village in Brazil, a little hut with a dirt floor, red tile roof, lived Maria and her daughter, Christina. Maria's husband had died when Christina was just an infant, and she'd done her best to raise her daughter. Christina was now an older, attractive teenage girl. She had this streak of independence that worried her mother. Christina would often talk about fleeing that dusty little village and going to Rio de Janeiro, you know, the city that seems so full of life. Her mother would often remind her of the dangers in that city. She knew that if her daughter went there and couldn't support herself, well, there would be danger and perhaps even tragedy ahead. Well, one morning, Maria realized that her daughter was missing. Oh, she knew immediately where Christina had gone, and it broke her heart. As soon as she could save up enough money for a bus ticket, Maria packed a little suitcase and headed for the bus depot. Before arriving, she stopped at a little drugstore, stepped into one of those uh, photography booths, and, and took all the pictures of herself that she could afford. And with that, Maria headed for Rio de Janeiro. She began visiting places that had a reputation for prostitution. She knew that when sinful rebellion meets hunger, a person might do anything to survive. So Maria went to the bars and the hotels and the nightclubs, and wherever she went, she taped her picture to a wall there in hotel lobbies or on bathroom mirrors. And on the back of each photograph, she had written the same message. Well, finally, several days later, she ran out of money. She ran out of photographs. Weary and heartbroken, she boarded the bus alone for the long journey home. Weeks turned into months. And then one day, Christina was descending the steps from a hotel room. She looked across the lobby, saw the photograph of a familiar face taped to the wall. She ran over and took it down. And sure enough, it was a photograph of her mother. Her eyes you know, filled with tears as she, as she looked at that picture of her mother, the one who truly loved her. Then she turned the photograph over, and there on the back, she read this message. Wherever you are, whatever you have become, it doesn't matter. Come home. She went back home. Beloved, God already knows that Israel is going to stray from home. In fact, even as Moses is delivering these appeals, God knows Israel is going to pursue a life of sin, which, which, is, which is why even here, centuries earlier, Moses is reminding them they're never beyond the reach of God's grace if they'll repent and come home. Now with that, Moses delivers one more appeal. Here it is. Don't ever stop choosing each day to walk with God. Well, Moses wraps up his rather powerful and passionate message in chapter 30 as this chapter ends at verse 19. He says, I call heaven and earth to witness against you today that I have set before you life and death, blessing and curse. Therefore, choose life loving the Lord your God, obeying his voice, and holding fast to him, for he is your life and length of days. Wow. Here's the choice. Life or death, sin or the Savior, what will it be for Israel way back then? Let me tell you more importantly, what will it be for you today? Just as it was for Israel when you choose to love the Lord and obey his voice, you're actually choosing a life worth living. So today, choose to love him and follow him and obey his word. And when you make that choice today, it's going to make all the difference in your life today and tomorrow. Well, until our, our next wisdom journey together, may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. <laughs>